Hello, everyone, and welcome to the SEO Scholars Achievement Benefit. My name is Maya Korringel, and I'm a member of the SEO Board of Directors, and I'm also the co-managing partner of the RISE Fund, which is TPG's uh, impact fund. I am thrilled tonight to be able to moderate a fireside chat and also participate in the virtual achievement benefit as we celebrate and recognize two significant milestones for SEO Scholars San Francisco. The first milestone being the 10th anniversary of uh, SEO Scholars San Francisco. And the second is doubling our program's impact through uh, some very important expansion. Over the next decade, SEO Scholars is going to serve over 500 Bay Area students on their journey to and through college graduation with an expected 90% graduation rate. And each of you has played a role in the growth of this uh, program and reaching these milestones. And on behalf of our board, our staff, and the scholars, most importantly, thank you for your commitment, your investment, and for tuning in to the achievement benefit. So let's get started. Tonight, we're gonna hear from two distinguished private equity leaders, John Winkleried and Henry Kravis. I'm delighted to curate a conversation with them where they are going to share their personal perspectives on their leadership philosophy, their professional and educational journeys, the importance of SEO and its values in their lives and more. And although they need no introduction, I'm gonna kick off with some headlines about our speakers. John Winkleried is the CEO of TPG where he oversees the day-to-day -day operations of the firm and where I have the pleasure of seeing him work his craft uh, every day. TPG was founded in 1992 and has more than 100 billion in assets under management. And John joined TPG in 2015 after a 27 year career with uh, Goldman Sachs, which he topped off as president and co-chief operating officer of that firm. TPG is a very proud longtime SEO partner and we co-founded SEO's alternative investments program with uh, KKR. Henry Kravis is the co-founder, co-chair, and co-CEO of KKR, which was founded in 1976 and today has over $400 billion in assets under management across multiple strategies. In 2009, KKR co-founded SEO's Alternative Investments Program alongside TPG, and since assuming the role of SEO's national board chair in 2014, Henry has been a tireless champion uh, for SEO Scholars Program, doubling its size in New York City and actively generating support for the San Francisco chapter. So we have until 6 p.m. tonight, so let's get started uh, with a few questions for our guests. Hi, John. Hi, Henry. Um, let, me, let me start by uh, talking about um, the fact that SEO's mission is to match historically underserved and historically excluded young people to educational and professional opportunities. And John, um, would love it if you would start off by talking to us about the role that education and mentorship uh, played in your own life, because those stories are always inspiring and important for our, for our scholars. Thanks, Maya. Um, and um, I just want to say that it's, a, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be on the panel today with Henry, um, who I've known for a long time as well in my prior life and uh, uh, and now, you know, joining today in, in support of SEO. So um, it's great to be here. Um, you know, education, I mean, first of all, I, um, I at its very core, I grew up in a household that was very focused on education. And uh, it was really the foundation of kind of most everything that happened in my, in my, in my home. Um, you know, my parents expected a lot of us with respect to our focus on education. My mother was a school teacher um, and uh, I grew up in a, in a home with uh, one brother and we and my parents came from that generation where, um, you know, focusing on education as sort of a springboard to opportunity um, and really kind of giving giving yourself options with respect to. Uh, building your base and uh, and um, and you know having a better opportunity than my parents' generation was really based 
on the philosophy of education underpinning all of that. So um, at its very core, that was really um, central in everything that sort of uh, was, uh, was part of my upbringing. And mentorship was really also kind of a key um, part of really my journey o- overall, because I think mentorship probably started with my dad um, and, uh, you know, um, him writing hurt on me in, a, in, a, in, a, in an appropriate way. And, um, and then all through my career, I mean, from the very beginning at Goldman, I seem to have had the privilege and the benefit of some really strong mentors that took an interest in me, pushed me, um, you know, um, in some cases gave me opportunities that I probably wasn't exactly ready for, but it's those sort of stretch opportunities where mentors take an interest in you and believe in you that really make the difference in terms of your development and uh, having you, you know, force, force you to be adaptable and force you to, to adjust. Um, so um, I would say overall, just very, very critical in my whole journey. So, so you would say to the SEO scholars who um, feel the pressure of, 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 of work and high expectations, it's good for you. Keep going. Yeah, I think, you know, um, when you feel like um, when when you either get that whisper, you know, in one of your ears, like, you know, keep pushing, keep going. Um, when you get somebody that um, is giving you is 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 giving you advice or when you're getting that kind of tough love occasionally, you know, um, take it on and um, and really embrace it. And I think, you know, as we know, part of the mission of SEO has been all about really trying to provide that that sort of, of that framework for you know people understanding the value of mentorship people understanding the value of driving um uh to excellence in your education and giving yourself giving opening up opportunities or giving yourself making opportunities happen um and seo has been has been brilliant in doing that right in terms of like an institutional framework around um creating uh, the opportunity to, um, to, uh, kind of step off the edge, if you will, because there's, 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 there's some support structure around that. No, that's great. Um, Henry, if I can, if I can ask you to share, you know, some of your own life experience and and the role that education and mentorship played for you. My, first of all, Maya, thank you for agreeing to be, um, the moderator here. Uh, you're, a great addition to our board, our national board at SEO, and we're thrilled to have you as part of that. Uh, John, I have known you a long time, particularly in your different roles at at Goldman Sachs. Uh, I've always had incredible admiration and respect for you, and so to be able to share a panel with you is a a great uh, honor for me, and thank you for agreeing to do this to, to help SEO. We appreciate it. Uh, very much. The, the question about uh, mentorship in, in, in our life, uh, if we're lucky in life, you have one or more mentors. I was lucky. And like John, my father was an incredible mentor, pushed me constantly to do better uh, in everything that I did, which encouraged me to, to take risks to challenge myself constantly. And, and that in and of itself was extremely uh, helpful. Um, two other people in my life that were extremely helpful along the way when I was younger, uh, one was uh, a teacher I had in, in high school and he encouraged me to take his economics course. I, I couldn't spell economics, I didn't know what it was but I took this course and I loved it. I mean, it was, uh, to this day, I remember how excited I got about it and I couldn't wait to open uh, the economics books that I had to read. And that was extremely uh, useful. He kept pushing me and pushing me and I I really uh, give him a lot of credit for the reason that I ended up going into business. Um, And that that was extremely helpful. And another person was a boss that I had at uh, the Madison Fund uh, in uh, in New York, and it was uh, my, at, right after I graduated from from uh, college. Um, I went to work this Madison at the Madison Fund for a short for a summer stint before I went on to business school, 
And he just kept pushing me. And he'd say, you're going to go out and you're going to call on the CEO of this company or that company. And the last one being, uh, you're going to go call on Roy Disney at the Disney company. And I was scared of that. I said, so who's going with me? And he said, no one, you're going yourself. And that in and of itself pushed me out of my comfort zone. And I, and I learned that, you know, if I'm going to see somebody like that, and I'm a kid that just graduated from college, I better, you know, know what I'm talking about. And I was, I was lucky. Uh, I got out there and he said, Henry, I have one hour uh, to meet with you. And I said, well, that's great. And we got about halfway through it. By the way, I had read absolutely everything I could about the Disney company. I read 10 Ks, 10 Qs, uh, research report, annual report, et cetera. And I wrote out all my questions. We started talking and he said, Henry, he said, you know a lot about my company. He said, most people that come out here to talk to me just expect me to tell, uh, to tell them the whole story. He said, you've obviously done a lot of work. And he said, I know I told you that uh, I had only an hour for you. Uh, but he said, because you care so much about the Disney company, uh, I want you to go with me to every one of my meetings today. And at the end of the day, I will take you on a uh, tour of the Disney studios, uh, personally. And it was an incredible, uh, experience. And I pushed that back really to, um, Ed Merkel, the, the president of the Madison fund, because he, uh, was the one that encouraged me to go take these risks, get out there get out of my comfort zone. And that was what was really important. So I try to tell all younger uh, people today, get out of your comfort zone, you know, uh, take, uh, take those, get into those uncomfortable positions because you'd be amazed how much you can accomplish uh, out there on your own. So mentorship meant a, a very big uh, an amount to me and I look back and I say, I think I'm where I am today in large part of that early formative mentorship. No, that's that's extremely helpful and actually, you know, interesting some of the, the comments that resonate between your experience and, and John's. So, you know, Henry, if we can stay with you for a moment, um, one of the things that has impressed me not only in my um, year as a member of the board of SEO, but also thinking back to SEO alum who I went to college with, who I went to business school uh, with, is one of the things that SEO does well is to build future leaders. And um, would love for you to share a, wor a few words about your own leadership style and you know some pearls of wisdom that you can you can pass along to the to the group about leadership. Well, first of all, every time I talk about leadership and uh, I think about it. They say, you know, you can't be a leader unless you got followers. Yeah. So the only way you're going to have followers is to be able to communicate uh, with people, be able to communicate whatever it is you're trying to get across. I'm also of the belief that a, a leader is someone who takes people uh, to, 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 to areas they never thought they could reach, never thought they could attain. And uh, so... I'm a big believer in that. I'm also a very big believer in uh, when it comes to leadership, it's all about the team that you put together. It's not about one person. I don't care who it is. Uh, and interestingly, when I have an opportunity to interview CEOs and we're thinking about hiring for one of our portfolio companies, I'm always listening to see, are they talking about their team? Or is everything they're talking about is about them? <laughs> you know, I did this, I did that. And I'm not sure one can be a great leader uh, unless they bring their team along and unless they uh, show them uh, where they can get. Sure, leadership means a lot of things to a lot of people. And one of them is, to, to me anyway, is what kind of value system do you have? You know, I think all of us, uh, are only as good as the compass that we have within ourselves. Uh, what is the, uh, the um, values that you live by day in and day out, not just, you know, internally, but, you know, are you, uh, not, and not just talking about it, but what are you doing to, uh, to show it, to show it day in and day out, just your example of your life 
is awfully good leadership in and of itself. No, that's 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 so that's so true. Um, John, if you can um, maybe talk a little bit about your leadership style. I mean, you 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 have uh, a lot of fans here within TPG. You have a lot of fans at Goldman Sachs. I'm happy to say, um, among women in finance, um, you are one of our favorites um, uh, because you're a great leader. But talk a little bit about your own leadership values. Yeah, my well, I think um, Henry touched on a lot of really important things there. Um, the one, th one, one thing that um, among a number that, that Henry mentioned that resonates with me um, is this question of team. Um, you know, I think that uh, I learned very, very early on. I remember when I was at Goldman Sachs, I was, I think I was, a, a, it was um, just, it was before I was a partner at Goldman Sachs and I was working with a client on a financing and the client was asking me uh, questions about what I thought about how to structure it, how to market it, et cetera. And I was going through this discussion and there was a partner of the firm who was on the phone with me. And I can distinctly remember, I'll never forget this. I can distinctly remember I was talking about, well, I think the market's doing this and I think we should structure it like this, et cetera. And I got off the phone with me, I got off the phone and the partner called me back and said, listen, the content's great except every time you talk about the view that we have, you use the word, I think, as opposed to we think, and you're representing the firm when you say that. And so that, that stuck with me. I've never forgotten that in terms of um, how I think about team and how I think about presenting um, uh, what we're doing. And um, so I think team is really critically important. And I always um, have taken, an approach of trying to lead in partnership with my partners, with, you know, with other people on the team. Um, it's really, you know, I, I, I learned early on in my career that um, it's businesses like ours are not command and control. They're really not. They're really team and, um, and, and developing, being a great leader is also about being able to, to take other people's views um, to develop uh, dissenting views, uh, competing views, um, but ultimately trying to develop and drive towards some consensus. At the end of the day, somebody, someone may need to make a decision, right? And so um, a good leader is comfortable making decisions, but a good leader is somebody that I think you come out of that process where people feel like they've been heard. Um, and so um, that's always been sort of a core part of how I think about uh, leadership. I think the other thing I would say, Maya, to your point is that I've had some experiences along the way where I realized that um, promoting um, a diverse environment where you have um, people that come from different places, different points of view, different perspectives is not only good in terms of decision making, but it's also something that creates, in my view, a richer environment day in, day out. Um, to be a part of. And I think that, you know, over the course of my career, I remember, um, you know, to Henry's point about getting out of your comfort zone. At one point, I was asked to move to Europe to run part of um, Goldman Sachs's operations in Europe. And um, I was kind of hesitant in the beginning. And I realized that, you know, um, at the end of the day, kind of pushing myself out of my comfort zone was the right thing to do. When I, when I, when I landed um, in Europe and realized that the complexion of people um, was very different than what it was in the U.S. Um, it was a much more um, heterogeneous environment. And it really struck me at how um, interesting and enjoyable and different that kind of atmosphere was. And it made an imprint on me mm. in, ter in, in terms of um, trying to um, think about that as sort of a core principle of driving diversity, driving a broad group of different types of people's, people and points of view. So I've always sort of tried to incorporate that and live that in terms of my leadership style. Um, and, um, you know, and ultimately, um, you know, I feel like um, the last thing I would say is I, I, I think it's important that people as, as a leader, I think it's important that people um, understand kind of what your objectives are, what your goals are, and that you're reasonably transparent about it. I think it's much easier for people to adapt to 
how are you think, you know, how does, how does the person that's kind of leading the operation or leading the business or leading the firm, how do they think about things and, um, and, um, and be transparent about it or have sort of a true North, if you will, in terms of what you're trying to drive for. Um, and so I believe that uh, that's helpful as well in terms of your leadership style. That's great. If, if I can ask you, John, to just go back to that point of diversity. So um, the last two years have obviously presented pretty significant challenges and opportunities also for social change. And can you talk about um, how you and um, to an extent TPG have responded to the push for racial equity um, in, in, in light of what's, what's happened uh, in society over the last couple of years? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, I mean, first of all, I think just to put it in perspective, I think we probably would all agree that the last couple of years have been, have presented incredible, an incredible set of challenges as it relates to um, the, um, the social justice movement and um, some combination of the, um, the visibility as a result of how we're all tied, how we're all connected some combination of the visibility and the reality that it creates for all of us, that there are serious issues of inequity um, around us, that there's serious bias. And, um, and the interesting thing is over the last couple of years is, as um, we've witnessed um, some real stress in our society, um, it's, it's prompted me to be a little bit of a student of this issue going back over the years. And, it's fascinating how, when you look at the sequence of time, how some of the things that we're dealing with today are so similar, actually, to what they've been over time. Um, and, um, and so I think that the, uh, but the difference maybe is sort of technology and the transparency of it all and how we're all sort of viewing it day to day. And um, in some respects, that's a real gift because it's allowed us to sort of share it with one another and one of the things that we've done at TPG, as you know, is that we have tried to use it as a, a bit of an inflection point and a catalyst for getting people together to talk about these issues. So, for instance, you know, we hosted a series of roundtables that you hosted some, I hosted some, other partners of the firm hosted them. And we got small groups of people together to talk about how people were really feeling about this. And frankly, it was very revealing. And I think it was a real learning experience for a lot of people in terms of people they work with day in, day out, they share the same kind of work experience with and how different their life experience is on a day in, day out basis. People who feel, um, I remember one of the women that works for us, a black woman who works for us was describing how she feels uncomfortable going out for a run. And so she wears a sweatshirt that actually has the words Wharton on it because she feels like it kind of it signals to people that she's either educated or you know she's not running from somebody and a pr pretty extraordinary sort of life experience is that that people who are sitting right next to you day to day and you don't really truly appreciate i think it's given us at the firm a greater much greater appreciation for sort of what um some of the challenges are um that people have to live with that you don't really fully appreciate until you sort of get it put right in your face in a different type of way. Um, and so, you know, among other things, I mean, that's something that we've been focused on this year. We've been obviously very focused on the composition of our people and, you know, and, and, and trying to drive toward much more um, diversity and equity in our organization, trying to drive toward our organization being a place where people feel like they can be their, their true selves. Um, and so we've worked very hard on that. We're, you know, as you know, our last two associate classes are 50% diverse, either um, gender or racially or ethnically. Um, many of which, by the way, are SEO um, uh, 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 graduates. Um, so um, we've um, we've taken, in some respects, we in in terms of this environment that we're living, we've taken we've tried to use it as an opportunity to really uh, catalyze further the consensus around the importance of this issue in our firm. No, that's so true. Um, Henry, you started as national board chair, obviously, before um, the challenges of the last two years. And, you know, KKR has has always had a long commitment to 
um, ESG and a lot of the values that matter to SEO. But can you talk a little bit about, you know, what your um, sense of the world is, right, in, in, in terms of um, racial um, and social equity, um, given the last two years? Well, look, the, the, the alternative investment industry has really been late in coming to the party in general. Um, we were late coming to the party and hiring women. We were late coming to the party and hiring diverse uh, talent. And uh, all of us, like John has said, are really working very hard to try to make up for it. I've been a huge believer, and I've said over and over again, that you have to have diversity of gender, ethnicity, and thought. And they're all important. Um, and uh, so what we've done at KKR is in 2015, we started a diversity and inclusion council. We hired a, a head of uh, diversity and inclusion at the firm. And we've made a, a real effort. We've made str great strides. And that has, uh, that's, I think, will hold us in very good stead. John mentioned something that I think is really interesting and important. And I think during this period of COVID, many of us have really opened up much more and are willing to share experiences. So during the, 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 the intense COVID period, when we all were locked down in our house, we decided at, at KKR that we would have a series of uh, conversations, we called them. And some of them were honestly uncomfortable, but they were great. And we asked uh, uh, black executives uh, and, and, and others from not-for-profit and from the government to come in and talk to us. And I moderated a lot of those. in just having the chance, tell us your story. And it was amazing, as John just mentioned, about the woman who works for you, who wore the Wharton uh, T-shirt. Every one of these uh, people told us stories about how uh, unconscious bias has affected them. And so one of the things that we did also was bring in uh, a team of people out of Harvard to come in and work on unconscious bias training. Uh, to uh, to help our people understand uh, what this is all about. Um, today, where we are is we've made great strides. Like TPG, we've been able to uh, bring in a number of SEO grads uh, over the years, and uh, we have summer interns coming in. I think we've got 10 already coming in for next uh, summer, summer 2022. And um, it's a step in the right direction. Um, it, it, one of the things that we also did, we made a commitment that we would have on every board uh, of directors of a company that we controlled at KKR through our private equity group, uh, that we'd have at least two, if not more diverse board members. That could be women or it could be um, uh, uh, Latinx or uh, black uh, directors. We've accomplished that. We Now I want to take it even further and not just have it, the women be part of that. I want to try to get more of Latinx and more uh, black members on the on these boards. It's made, it's made a huge difference. I think our companies, I know for sure KKR is a much better uh, company as a result of having this uh, diversity that we have. It also brings diversity of thought and different backgrounds. You know, we all get so busy and we're focused on quote unquote the deal at the time or whatever it is. And we don't spend enough time getting to know each other and find out what makes people tick. I read a great book uh, a while ago called uh, 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 singing Vivaldi and um, and it was the same kind of thing of wearing that Wharton uh, sweatshirt this uh, black man would whistle Vivaldi because he thought if he did that people would say well he's educated he's okay and that bias might might go away and it 
these kinds of things just open my eyes. And I think for all of us, and I've had many of our people say, thank you for doing this. It really uh, brought attention to something that we weren't even aware of. And, you know, we all have to, to do our part here and it's long overdue. Thank you, Henry. Well, we could we could spend hours um, with you both, but I think that's all the time that we have together. And um, what I want to say for me personally, but also on uh, behalf of the rest of the board, both both on the national board and the San Francisco board and the team and the sponsors, we thank both of you for your personal commitment for your longstanding um, support of uh, SEO and all you do um, in service of the organization and um, making a difference in um, the systemic challenges that we that we face today through your support of SEO. And so now for the big show, um, the SEO Scholars Achievement Benefit. We have quite a speaker lineup tonight. Um, you're going to hear again from our uh, 2021 honoree, uh, John Winkle-Reed, as well as Pierre Theodore. You're going to hear from advisory board members, Philip Yao and John Rogers. Um, you're going to hear from the SEO Scholar San Francisco board chair, my former classmate, um, I'm a big fan, and uh, uh, the founder, Adam Carr, um, plus some special guests, Charles Schwab, Vicky Tsai, and more. So I can't wait to hear from this lineup, and I'm very um, excited, as I am in every board meeting, to hear directly um, from the phenomenal SEO scholars themselves. This is something that you know Henry does at every board meeting, um, bringing some of the scholars along to speak to us about their experiences, and we derive so much inspiration as uh, the scholars tell us about pursuing their dreams of becoming first generation college graduates and finding educational and uh, and uh, professional opportunities that um, are available to them because of SEO. So stay tuned um, as the 2021 SEO Scholars Achievement Benefit officially begins and over to you, Omar Wandera. Good evening, and welcome to the 2021 SEO Scholars Achievement Benefit. My name is Omar Wandera, and I am the Executive Director of SEO Scholars San Francisco. Tonight, I'm feeling so much excitement as we celebrate 10 years of scholars seizing every opportunity. Over the last decade, scholars have worked tirelessly to achieve their goals. 10 cohorts of over 215 dedicated scholars have put in the work to be the first in their families to graduate from college. In fact, the class of 2021 continues SEO's legacy. Last year, over 70% gained admission to many of the top colleges in the country. To think, it was just a few short years ago when the class of 2015's hard work paid off as they became our very first college graduates in San Francisco. Each subsequent semester, scholars from the classes of 2015, 16, and 17 have become first generation college graduates with a 90% graduation rate. It was only a decade ago that we launched this program. And after doubling last year's cohort and planning for additional opportunities to scale, we will reach and create opportunities for over 500 deserving scholars in the coming years. This would not be possible without you. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and being here for our celebration. We are thrilled to showcase our community members as we are furthering SEO's work within their industries. 
2021 honorees, John Winkle-Reed and Dr. Pierre Theodore. So let's get started. I would like to introduce tonight's co-MCs, longtime SEO partner, Emily Quinn, and University of Chicago's first year scholar, Jaira Martin. Thanks so much, Omar, and welcome. As Omar mentioned, my name is Emily Quinn, and I'm a very longtime fan and supporter of SEO San Francisco. I'm super excited to be here with my fantastic co-MC. Thank you, Emily. Hi, my name is Jaira Martin, and I am an SEO college scholar in my first year at the University of Chicago. Tonight, I will be your student co-MC live from my dorm room. Love that. Thanks, Jaira. And I'm going to give you a quick overview of the platform. First of all, you are viewing this in the viewing window. And at any point, you can minimize your screen so that you can see the other components of the platform. We have a support bot. If you're having any technical issues, if you need any help, you can go ahead and take a, a click at that support bot. If you're having any donating or pledging issues, that's the place to go for that as well. The entire program is closed caption. And in order to turn that on, you just go to the bottom right-hand corner of the viewer. We have a few engagement opportunities. And uh, the first and foremost is to use that chat, which so many of you are doing right now. I'm watching it. Everyone at SEO is watching it. We love hearing the love. So definitely use that chat. And be sure to check out the digital program also down below this viewer. And throughout the program, we're going to have a few questions and some polls and other ways for you to engage. So find the polls and questions section there as well. And of course, also down below this window is the giving section. Now, uh, at some point, we're inviting every single person, 100% of you to find your reach, whatever your reach is this evening. Help us invest in SEO. And uh, we've actually had an awesome head start already. So thanks to Anna, Laura, Pierre, Brad, Brian, so many of you. Let's keep this momentum going. I see some messages of support in the chat. Hey, Zachary. Hi, Matthew and Maria, Elena and Adrian. It's so nice. I can't see you, but to see you. Um, now let's take a glimpse at what SEO is and the impact it has had and continues to have on our communities today. SEO Scholars is on a mission to create a more equitable society. We know a college degree is a life-changing accomplishment, not just for a first-generation college student, but for their families and communities. And yet, not all students have access to the same opportunities. My parents always tried to inculcate the idea that going to college was a necessity. So I always really wanted to go, but I never knew how to. I never knew how to apply, how to stay in college and not drop out. So SEO really helped me. While public school teachers and college counselors do incredible work, they simply do not have the necessary resources to prepare every single student for admission to a four-year college. This disparity greatly impacts students furthest away from opportunity, low-income students, students of color, and first-generation students. It's a compound sentence. How do you know it's a compound sentence? SEO Scholars is working to change that. Our mission is to close this opportunity gap and provide students with additional academic support, college advising, and social-emotional resources necessary to achieve their college graduation dreams. Through SEO, scholars attend rigorous English and math curriculum throughout the school year. By the time scholars graduate high school, they will have completed over 700 hours of additional instruction, ensuring they are well prepared for the challenge of college-level coursework. Beyond the classroom, SEO connects scholars with mentors, life-changing pre-college programs, internships, SAT preparation, and one-on-one -on -one college application support. In SEO Scholars, everyone has the goal of getting into college. No matter if you're Black, Latinx, or Asian, we all want that support system. Within two weeks of the Bay Area Shelter-in-Place order, SEO ensured that every high school scholar had a laptop and reliable internet access, and that college scholars had the resources necessary to safely continue their studies. We expanded program manager check-ins with scholars to ensure their physical and emotional well-being. 
This one-on-one -on -one support resulted in 95% engagement in virtual classrooms. You guys are showing up today and I'm just like overwhelmed by how on it you are. Shifting the curriculum to a virtual model allowed SEL to expand our program and our reach to students throughout the Bay Area. Through a hybrid program model, we will double the size of future cohorts while maintaining the high quality programming SEL scholars and families have come to expect. Our team continues to innovate and expand offerings to students beyond our existing programming. <music> 2021 marks SEL Scholar San Francisco's 10th anniversary. Over the past decade, we have accomplished some truly incredible feats. I am a Boston University 2019 graduate. I am now a junior at UC Berkeley. I am a recent graduate from Santa Clara University. Without SEO, I wouldn't be who I am today. SEO did more than impact my life. It changed the course of my life. With the support of our community, SEO scholars will reach over 500 dedicated young scholars in the next decade, opening doors to top tier colleges and universities around the country and empowering the next generation of Bay Area leaders. You are magic, unfolding majestically. You are magic, defined magic, personified magic, undenied. 2021 forever gets it done. Thank you. Oh my goodness, I have goosebumps all over my arms, by era. I loved your poem, absolutely amazing. Uh, I love that I had the opportunity to visit SEO San Francisco classrooms before the pandemic. I got to feel that energy myself. There's so much support and community, these students coming together. And 95% uh, engagement during virtual programming, is it's just unheard of. Yes, Emily, this community is so special. SEO cultivates an environment where students like me and my SEO peers are destined to succeed. And we not only get to college, but we get through college. I absolutely love that. And remember, show your love in the chat. We see you, Pierre and Jason, Jenny and Steve. We know we've got people from San Francisco, New York, Berkeley, Virginia, Santa Cruz from all over the country. It's so exciting. So up next, we will hear from two SEO leaders and my former program managers, Emma and Miranda. Good evening, I'm Emma Brodeur, the Associate Director of Curriculum and Instruction at SEO Scholars. I'm so excited to be here. I finally get to wear my dress I've been saving since 2020. It looks beautiful, Emma. Thanks, Miranda. My name's Miranda Herrera. I'm the Associate Director of College Admissions with San SEO Scholars San Francisco. Um, and together with Emma, we oversee the program. Tonight, we're here to introduce and welcome our incredible scholars. But first, we want to stop and celebrate the last 10 years of incredible effort and investment in our community, our families, instructors, mentors, advisory board, leadership council members, community partners, not the least of which are scholars. The last decade was a culmination of effort from everyone involved. Our scholars attended thousands of hours of SEO curriculum, we built a community with a shared goal of college admission, ensuring that every scholar has everything that they need in order to reach that goal. We also create shared spaces that where scholars can ri take risks, fail, learn from their mistakes, and adopt a growth mindset. It was not always easy to be the first, to launch a new program and a new site but the challenges have made the successes that much sweeter. Especially as scholars received their college admissions results and their high school diplomas as they went off to their college campuses and moved into their dorms. 
I still remember in 2015, we celebrated our first high school graduating class in San Francisco. And in 2019, we had our very first college graduate. Jessica graduated a whole semester early from UC Santa Cruz mm -hmm. to be the very first San Francisco Scholars High School, a college graduate. And just this past year, the high school class of 2020, 2021, my first high school class, had absolutely decimated every year before's records. We had our first Questbridge Scholar and Full Ride Scholarship. Actually, we had two. One who went to University of Chicago, the other went to Columbia University, is going in the fall. We also had our first Gates Scholar, we had our first Posse Scholar, and 70% of the class of 2021 got into a tier one college. Our scholars would never have reached these incredible milestones if it weren't for the hard work of everyone involved, including our the college and high school staff, our instructors, mentors, everyone past and present. Collectively, we've built this program in partnership with each of you and have served over 215 scholars and their families. It's incredible. Yeah, and now we are doubling our program to serve over 500 scholars in the next decade. And who better to represent the hard work and extreme dedication of our scholars than the scholars we'll hear from next. Now, Sina, take it away. Good evening. My name is Nasina Chambers. I'm an SEO Scholars alum who graduated from Raul Wallenberg High School in 2017 and UC Berkeley in 2021 with a major in Global Studies, Global Development. I'll be facilitating tonight's scholar conversation. Hi, my name is Johnny Lin. I'm a senior at George Washington High School. This fall, I am applying to colleges and my dream school is MIT. Hi, my name is Enrique. Um, I went to uh, Lincoln uh, High School in 2019. I graduated and currently am in uh, USC uh, in my major is international relations. Nice, fight on. Enrique and Johnny, it is so nice to speak with both, with both of you. All of us joined SEO because we wanted to get into and graduate from four-year colleges. Tonight, I'd love to talk with you about why for all of us the motivation to show up for an extra day of school plus five weeks each summer and the role SEO has played in each of our journeys to college, regardless of where we are on those journeys. I'm curious, Enrique, what motivated you to participate in SEO to show up for an additional 700 plus hours of academic instruction? So what motivated me to do all that work to, to go every single Saturday um, after school was the fact that I was given keys to open big doors, right? Uh, to be able to go to a school such as USC uh, motivated me, right? Um, as, you know, I'm not going to say it was perfect and I enjoyed it all, you know, every single Saturday, but I knew that every single time I went, I got closer. I got a little bit more experience. I got one more key, uh, one more door open. So as I saw, uh, as my journey, uh, went on, I saw that doors were opening. So that kept motivating me to kind of keep going. Awesome. And Johnny, you're still in programming. What is motivating you to participate in SEO? Yeah. So for me, I always knew I wanted to go to college, but I didn't necessarily know how to get there. So with the help of SEO and my program managers, uh, they're honestly my motivation to continue working on the college apps, even if that's like tagging me in a doc and making sure I complete prompts for college apps. I feel exactly the same way. We are never alone in this journey. We have our community from SEO, meaning our fellow scholars, alumni. And for me, I joined SEO because no one in my family had ever been to college. I have nine brothers and sisters, and they all set out to pursue jobs after high school, but I knew I did not want that. Um, it motivated me being in the program and the, the fact that SEO kept it promised to get me into college and through graduating college. I'm just so thankful for being an SEO. 
What's great about SEO is what also happens outside of the classroom. The college prep, the enrichment programs, SAT strategy courses, in college trips, mentors. I personally was able to intern at Bank of America and it shifted my mindset of getting a job versus a career. Plus having access to a mentor who inspired my vision to travel. I'm curious, once again, Enrique, what type of opportunities did you take advantage of through SEO while in high school to build your college application and what support did you receive once you were in college? Um, I took opportunity uh, of everything, of free books. Uh, I feel like one of the biggest thing was uh, my mentor though. Uh, he was the reason why I go to USC. Uh, he attended USC. He is a you know Latino kid, also low income, uh, also had a lot of difficulties growing up. Um, but you know he he told me it was not impossible, right? He went, he did it. So he was like, so you can't, you could also do that. Um, right. So I feel like that was one of the biggest tools. Uh, he told me so much, uh, about his experience, um, and how he did it and how tough it was. What are the different things that, uh, became harder over time. Right. So just having somebody that, um, kind of like told me and, 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 and kind of guided me through, um, you know, college. Right. One of the other biggest tools was, uh, you know, counselors at SCL, right? Um, I initially went to City College my first year. Uh, I took about, you know, 45 units to be able to go to USC. Um, so that was another great tool. She kind of like dragged me into, you know, uh, doing everything, do this, do that, do this. And I knew, you know, I didn't know much. So that was one of the biggest tools, right? She, she was able to give me that opportunity that I never really thought I was going to have, right? To attend a four-year college and I feel like that was one of the biggest tools I ever had, my my counselors at SCF. Agreed. I, I think you're talking about your college persistence advisor. And I, too, I found a great relief having a SIFA while going through my college journey. Um, for you, Johnny, I want to ask and pose the same question. What advantages are you taking, um, are you taking with you while in SEO in this moment? Yeah, so a lot of it is my enrichment programs, and I actually found out a, about a lot of them from my program manager at SEO. And the programs that I'm in now is Moe's Tech and MIT STEM program and QuestBridge College Prep Scholars, where I learn various different things. So in my MIT program, I had to learn all about STEM um, and get to explore different colleges. And same goes with QuestBridge. There's a community of people that are wanting to go to college. So just having that is motivation itself. Thank you, Johnny. That was a great response. I couldn't have heard anything better, honestly. Um, next, I remember during our orientation, um, we all heard you know, from Adam Carr about the idea of sending the elevator back down for our next generation. For me, this is, you know what you owe, that you have to give back. So for me, being a first graduate means that now that I'm stepping into the workplace and I'm going to become a college advisor counselor at a high school, I realize the importance of everything that I've learned through SEO. I now have the chance to teach a student and for them to use what I've learned to then get them to where I have been already. Johnny, what will it mean for you to be a first generation college graduate? Yeah, so for me, um, it's definitely, like you said, sending the elevator back down. So me being a first generation low income student, I want to sort of do the same thing that SEO did for me. And um, after college, I, of course, I want to pursue a career in tech. So um, but within tech, I want to use the power that tech has to create social change within the society that we have today. Um, I mean, what it means for me to graduate and to be able to have a college degree uh, is to be able to kind of leave a piece of myself everywhere I go, right? Without having a college degree or without having education, it's really, really hard to leave a mark. Uh, you know, especially in big industries or in companies, right? I'm going to be able to go in there and apply for a job I want to do, 
or go into a different country to be able to uh, teach different things, right? So being able to have the ability to leave a mark, uh, that's, you know, that's something I'm going to have and I will take advantage of. So everywhere I go, I'm going to be able to, to leave something, a piece of myself um, and to kind of show kids that like myself, it is possible to do. And it's impossible. It's not impossible. Just like my mentor showed me that it is possible to go to USC. Uh, I, I want to show kids, low income kids, undocumented kids like myself that, you know, it is possible. Like we could do it. That's deep. I absolutely agree with you, Enrique. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, Johnny. There was so much wisdom in this conversation, so much power. And I'm excited to see the legacy that each of us will create. Thank you for participating tonight and sharing your stories. So beautiful. I can most definitely relate to my SEO peers' testimonies. And it was incredibly beautiful to hear each of you share your stories. I see myself in all of you. Speaking of my SEO peers, we have some breaking news. SEO San Francisco has five QuestBridge finalists for the class of 2022. And I would like to give a special congratulations to Johnny, who is our youngest panelist tonight for being one of them. That's so great. And Jair, I couldn't agree with you more. And talk about the legacy of SEO. I'm actually hearing that SEO career alumna and 2018 achievement benefit honoree Vicky Sai also has a very special message for us. Hi, my name is Vicky. I am um, a founder and CEO of a company called Tatcha, but more importantly, before that, I am a 1999 alumna of the SEO Career Program, and I used to work at SEO. And I just wanted to say congratulations on 10 years in the Bay Area. Something that they always taught us in SEO is that it's not about you, it's about those who come after you. And I think, you know, Adam Carr, the fact that you are the one who brought SEO national for the first time. I know you guys are doubling your numbers right now so that you can hit 500 kids and change their lives with new opportunities in the future. I'm hearing that 93% of the students who graduated this year are first to go to college in their families and that you're all going to these incredible schools. Congratulations. This is absolutely amazing. It's life-changing. I'm so proud to support this organization because I really believe in SEO's mission that everybody deserves an opportunity I am so honored to continue to support SEO as both an alum and as an investor because I fully believe in the mission of creating a more equitable future for all of us through career opportunities and through educational equality. So congratulations, it's absolutely amazing. Beautiful reminder and words of advice from Vicky. It's about the next SEO and giving back to SEO. Absolutely agree, Jaira. And, you know, 500 of these students, it's just, it's so inspiring. Uh, so next up, we're going to hear from 2021 Achievement Benefit honoree, Dr. Pierre Theodore and SEO Advisory Board Member, Philip Yao. Good evening. My name is Philip Yao, and I'm a proud member of the SEO San Francisco Advisory Board and a longtime supporter of SEO and its efforts. I first learned about SEO through one of my college roommates, Ramsey Smith, who today is the vice chairman of SEO National Board. Ramsey was an intern at SEO Careers when we were both undergrads at Princeton University. But fast forward, he and I and many others are now working together and are committed to the cause of SEO, which is to create a more equitable society. Tonight, it is with great pleasure I have the honor to introduce you to another roommate, Dr. Pierre Theodore. Pierre has spent his entire career working to further equity in the healthcare space and as a public servant and a commander in the US Navy. As a heart surgeon and a physician, he has leveraged his surgical expertise to increase access for marginalized communities around the world. Pierre currently serves as Vice President of Global Public Health at Johnson & Johnson, where he leads a team to decrease disparities in healthcare including increasing COVID vaccine availability during this pandemic. Over decades of his work, Pierre has consistently used his experience in leadership roles to further access opportunity and equity, ensuring that high quality healthcare is available to all. That is why tonight we are awarding Dr. Pierre Theodore the Adam 
our CAR Community Leadership Award. We established this award to recognize the efforts of SEO career alumnus, San Francisco founder and board chair, Adam Carr, and his impact on the next generation of leaders. Through Adam's own leadership and visionary spirit, he launched the San Francisco expansion more than 10 years ago. Today, we are now scaling and doubling that effort. That is the impact of community leadership. Pierre, my brother, it is my honor to present you with this award tonight. Congratulations. Phil, thanks so much. I could not be more excited to join you today and to participate in this opportunity for us to first and foremost celebrate all the fellows and the hard work that they do day in, day out in an extraordinary time that we find ourselves with respect to the challenges of COVID-19 and the current pandemic. And to be able to receive an award named after Adam Carr is deeply meaningful to me. If there's one thing that we've realized over the course of the last year is that there are severe inequities in healthcare that we see frequently. And often we see those same kinds of inequalities in education as well. And we know very well that in fact, talent can be distributed equally, but the opportunities are often very unequally distributed. And to be able to participate with an organization like SEO that is truly founded on the notion of providing opportunities to all is a deep honor for me. And for me to be here with you, Phil, makes it all the more important. So thank you very much for this opportunity and for all those that made this possible. Well, Pierre, I gotta tell you, you've, gone a you've come a long way since our days uh, living at Princeton together. And I've, this is the first time I've even heard you speak so eloquently. Wow, I'm impressed. Uh, I think our other roommates would also be impressed. At this point in your career, what are your reflections on the importance of education? Because that's what SEO is indeed about and the role it has played in your life. Bill, it's a great question. I think when we look over our careers and we ask ourselves, what is the bedrock, the foundation of all that we've tried to accomplish, whether it's in business, such as your extraordinary successes, or in healthcare, or as a as a writer or any particular profession, I would say most of us would go back to our education as really being the bedrock on which we built everything that we've been able to create during our lifetimes and all that we've been able to do for others. So when I look back, I say the opportunities that were afforded to us by our parents, by our family, by our mentors, those that really looked out for us and tried to make sure that we had access to the highest possible quality education really in some ways gave us the boost and the push that allowed us to be successful in life. That's true. And you know, another part of this is actually the network that you build in college. Indeed, uh, I became part of SEO because of Ramsey, and you're now a, a, the recipient of, this, of the Adam Carr Award. And you've spent your entire career fighting for equitable access to healthcare, including around the world, such as Haiti and Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, what drives this commitment to equity? That's an interesting question, Phil. I think fundamentally, I believe in this concept of justice. I believe that, as you mentioned earlier, that the, the group that you're born into or the location where you happen to be born shouldn't define your ability to achieve success in this life. So in some ways, we're, we use this term equity and disparities and we throw them around, but really what it's about is making sure that all of us have the opportunity to be successful in life. And that's exactly, in fact, what SEO does. It provides just those kind of opportunities for students who otherwise may have been disadvantaged in one way or another. And that is extraordinarily important. So for me, really equity is at this, this sort of foundation of justice. Now, I, <clears throat> you do all of, our, all of our roommates and classmates at Princeton very proud, um, and, I, and I'm sure uh, your family uh, would also be very proud of your commitment to this cause. And at this point in our lives, we're in positions where we can actually use our influence to help a lot of people and improve their lives. How do you think about your responsibility now to give back and open doors for others? You know, Phil, long ago, I made the decision to go into healthcare, and I, I did that largely because I thought it would give me the opportunity to reach out and figuratively and literally touch the patients to try to make them better. And I've been afforded an opportunity through the business of healthcare to reach many, many more patients than I could ever touch individually. 
Mm -hmm. And that also brings with it the responsibility to think about the equitable distribution of healthcare, both in the United States and beyond. And I think if we look over the last couple of years, as we've all, every one of us, and all of our families have struggled through this pandemic, we would say that you see some real gross inequality in terms of mortality, that is the likelihood of dying from COVID-19, for example, or illness or access to care, and thinking very carefully about how to offset some of those inequalities has yeah. become extraordinarily important to me. Yeah. And we see that both here in the United States, we see this, of course, around the world, and we see this sometimes in comparing one country to another. And Johnson & Johnson, fortunately, has given me this great opportunity to really dig in and try to address some of those injustices that lead to these disparities that you referred to earlier. That's terrific. Pierre, congratulations on being the recipient of the Adam Carr Community, Community Leadership Award. You are very deserving of this. Uh, we are all proud of you. And thank you for all that you do for the community. Thank you, Phil. It is such an honor to hear from Pierre Theodore, who's doing the groundwork to change the health disparities within our communities and building a bridge of connection between education disparities and low-income communities. We all deserve access to opportunity. Thank you so much for your wisdom. Quick reminder, don't forget to share your love in the chat. I see you, Ida, Matthew, Laura, Craig, and Emily. Love it. And also, don't forget to pledge your support using the Give Now section just below me. If you can't see it, go ahead and minimize your window. And uh, I'm just now hearing that we have another special guest. This time it is 2016 Achievement Benefit honoree Charles Schwab, whose foundation provided seed funding to establish and grow the program in the Bay. A college education is so fundamental to the development of each person's future. It leads to more knowledge, leads to better jobs, leads to better income, and just a more fulfillment in life. You know, I think uh, in our industry, in particular, financial services industry, we are really trying to seek and diversify our, our employee group. And nothing like having a college education is gonna help you accelerate your ability to get jobs in the financial services world, which we'd hope and hope they would come to Schwab. Uh, we couldn't be more thrilled with the SEO program and what you're going to accomplish and the number of new graduates that are going to be coming out. I'm so confident that the SEO program will help develop the new kids for our future employment. That's why I'm so pleased, and my wife too, to invest in the SEO program. I think it's an invaluable service for these kids and support, and we're fully behind it. We'll continue to be a long-term investor in SEO. Thanks, Henry, for introducing me in such a nice way and for bestowing on me this wonderful honor to be a part of the SEO program for the long term. All right, folks, that's Charles Schwab on investing. And that's what this is all about, investing in SEO programs and people. We have uh, $67,000 already in. Let's keep it going again looking for 100% participation. And I know that we all have different capacities to give, but I encourage you, whatever your reach is, find it this evening. Next up, we have a special conversation between 12th grade scholar Adrian and his mom, Maria Elena. If you happen to have closed captioning on, please go ahead and turn it off so you can read the subtitles. Hi, my name is Adrian. I'm a 12th grade scholar at City Arts and Tech High School. Hola, ¿cómo están? Soy María Elena Ramos, soy la mamá de Adrián. Eh, los, en, vivimos en el distrito Excelsior y ayudo a la comunidad. Actualmente estoy jubilada, así que trabajo colaborando para la comunidad. Um, so, we just wanted to tell you and let you know a little bit about our college journey and our path to college and how much SEO has like helped us in this journey that we're taking now. Eh, cuando Adrián me dijo que le habían dado la oportunidad de aplicar a SEO, yo lo primero que le pregunté a él es que era SEO. 
porque yo no sabía que era CEO. Apenas tenía ocho años de haber venido a este país y no sabía mucho de programa. Pero eh, fuimos a buscar la información a la, al web y vimos que CEO es un grupo de personas de bondadoso corazón que donan su dinero para que jóvenes de las minorías vayan a la universidad, que hagan el sueño realidad de ir a la universidad. Entonces, eh, me pareció que era una fabulosa idea y le dice, vamos hijo, tiene que aplicar a SEO. Yeah, I saw, I met, I learned about SEO through um, my school. We saw a presentation and I immediately was intrigued because I knew I wanted to go to college but I wasn't sure if I had the money or the resources. And I just didn't know the process of applying to college and knowing that there was a program out there that could have helped me. I was like immediately hopped on that opportunity. Cuando eh, eh, para mí fue una sorpresa muy agradable que lo recibieran a él, porque les tengo que ser bien honesta, Adrián llevaba notas término medio, pero él pasó la entrevista muy bien. Y eso lo que me, nos hizo es tener una buena experiencia. Entonces ahora yo asesoro a otras familias de cómo entrar a SEO y eso ha sido algo que me ha servido y lo he cap capitalizado porque la información que o, o lo que yo aprendí para hacer la aplicación fue muy bueno. Entonces servimos como ejemplo, Adrián le ayuda a otros niños a hacer sus aplicaciones y yo le ayudo a otras mamás a que se informen de qué se trata SEO. Yeah. And beyond getting better grades, um, I've had opportunities like my EP, uh, Link, which was uh, called linking, uh, linking Individuals to Their Natural Communities, which was just this beautiful program that had to do with outdoors. We did habitat restoration at Chrissy Fields Marshes. And then at the end, we did like a beautiful camping trip. It was just a really nice experience. Um, and I would never have found out about it or never would have done it if it wasn't for SEO. So, yeah. And so this fall now, with the help of SEO, I'm going to be applying to around 19 colleges, including St. Olaf, Boston, Colorado, UCLA, UC Irvine, and Stanford. Um, and, inclu and that includes some colleges that I'm going to be applying with through the Posse Foundation. And I even applied to the Gates Scholarship, which is really exciting to me. Again, opportunities that I would have never found out about if it wasn't for SEO. So, yeah. Yo creo que el, el sueño que estamos viviendo ahora con Adrián es el sueño americano que le dicen para en nuestros países porque nunca nos imaginamos que tuviéramos un recurso tan magnífico, magnífico como este porque en realidad el que le vengan a ver las, las cartas de las universidades en donde ellos lo están invitando a que quieren que sea parte de estas universidades, yo digo, wow, qué fabuloso. Y cada vez que viene una aplicación de una universidad o, o recibimos correo, todos en la casa celebramos, celebramos con mi esposo y le decimos, wow, de verdad eso está sucediendo, te Adrián, y es todo el esfuerzo tuyo y el esfuerzo, es un trabajo en equipo, ¿no? Trabajo de, de la familia, trabajo de SEO, trabajo de la escuela, trabajo comunitario. Muy buena experiencia y eso es lo que yo traslado también a la familia. Yeah, I think our roles reversed a little bit. Growing up, I was like a kid who was like, mom, look at that. Mom, look at this. This is so exciting. Look, look. And my mom was like, yes, son, yes. And then now my mom's like, Adrian, look at this college. Look at this opportunity. And like, like forwards me every email that like she ever receives. And I'm like, yeah, mom. Mm -hmm. And it's just exciting because seeing that excitement like really shows what going to college means to me. It means being able to provide for my family after they've given so much to me. It's, I'm not, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them and my dad. They both work really hard. Um, and yeah, what, sí. you, what, college, what does college mean to you, mom? No, es que para, ver, para nosotros que ver que Adrián se gradúe de una universidad va a ser como ver realizado nuestro trabajo, el esfuerzo que hemos hecho como padres. Entonces, el esfuerzo que él ha hecho. Entonces va a ser como de decir, hicimos bien la tarea todos. La hicimos nosotros como papás, la hizo él bien como hijo. Y el programa funcionó y, y, y hemos visto por lo que pudimos ver cuando leíamos las historias de, de personas que ahora son adultas y ahora son donadores de SEO y, y ahora salen en la televisión esas personas. Y digo yo, hijo, algún día tú vas a hacer lo mismo. Me encanta. Yo quiero que tú seas una persona que SEO lo logró llevar hasta el final de, de, de graduarse de la universidad y después tú te tienes que volver un donador como ellos lo están haciendo. Tienes que devolver esa parte. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. El, la, lo otro que quiero agregar es que 
yo siempre le doy consejos a mi hijo que a pesar de que él se vaya a, a la universidad, él tiene que aprender que todo esfuerzo va a tener una recompensa dulce. Que ahorita él se priva de ir con sus amigos, sus amigos andan paseando ahorita en un parque, todos en grupo y él me cuenta, pero él ahora está cumpliendo con algo que debe de hacer, porque así es, y hay que ser recíprocos. Entonces, él no va a camping porque eh, eh, está estudiando en verano. Todo eso es muy bueno, esos sacrificios, pero al final la recompensa va a ser dulce. I'm really thankful for my SEO community and everyone who's making this possible. But I'm mostly, again, thankful for my parents and my family because I, they've sacrificed so much for me. They've like, we, we left a lot behind in El Salvador. And I just, I thank you so much for that. I love you. Yo también te amo y solo el hecho de que seas primera generación de ir a la universidad, creo que para nosotros va a ser un éxito que no vamos a poder pagar con nada. Que Dios los bendiga, Seo. Thank you. Okay, friends, here we go. You have heard so many times this evening, these students, these scholars wanting that opportunity to give back to their families who have given so much to them. I see all the chats coming in. I love, love, love it. Right now we have about three minutes to make some serious magic happen. So if you can't see the giving section right now, you might need to exit full screen. You're gonna see those various contributions levels. We encourage you to find your reach. There is a, a button that says other, whatever your reach is, we need to get to 100% participation. We've got a $10,000 gift. We've got a $50,000 gift. Remember tonight, these are pledges. You can follow up after, you can pay by credit card, you can follow up with SEO. When they get your information, they will follow up with you. You have heard the impact of these programs and it is literally life changing what is happening right now. We encourage you to get in on the action. It feels so good. None of us got to where we are today without a little bit of help. This is your chance to make that magic happen. Two more $10,000 gifts. And every time this happens, I get goosebumps. You all are amazing. And again, if you're having any trouble, use that support bot button. And uh, we just got three $500 gifts. And I mean it when I say it, 100% participation. Find your reach, whatever amount you can give. Click that other button, help us make this happen. It's your opportunity to open up those doors for these amazing, young people, any amount that gives you that little bit of a sting, but lets you know that you've done something so incredible to literally change the course of someone's life. We've got $25,000 that can cover the SEO five week summer academy, which was a huge highlight for many of our scholars, including Jaira. A $10,000 gift can cover the cost of 200 laptops, the technology needs, keeping these kids connected, so important. And uh, your gift of $5,000 can cover the cost of senior boot camp. Gifts of $1,000 can cover the cost of family workshops to familiarize families with the college admissions process. And I'll tell you from my experience in the SEO classrooms, uh, seeing those, uh, those family workshops were so powerful and supporting the entire network of individuals that gets these young people to and through college. And that's what this is all about. Another $1,000 gift, a $10,000 gift, my friends. Any gift right now, seize this opportunity to support these young people. And I'm gonna add here that in one of our rehearsals, when I was chatting with Jaira off camera, she said, SEO is magic. And it really is true. They cannot work their magic without you. So jump in, click that button, go through that process. SEO will follow up with you to close on those pledges and it looks like we have a, another special guest video from Thurman White. Thurman White was the 2018 Achievement Benefit Honoree. Hi, my name is Thurman White. I'm the retired CEO of Progress Investment Management Company in San Francisco and a 2018 Achievement Benefit Honoree for Community Leadership. I wholeheartedly support SEO scholars, San Francisco. I've had the opportunity to see firsthand the rigorous academic support program that it provides to students, especially students of color. In fact, uh, one of the SEO scholars actually interned successfully with Progress a few years ago. 
So I congratulate SEO Scholars on its 10th year anniversary in San Francisco. For the past 10 years, over 200 students have been supported on their journey to college and just literally thousands of hours of math and English support have been provided to those students. 100% of them have gained admission and over 90% of them have graduated from college. So please join my wife Eileen and I as we support SEO Scholars San Francisco in its 10th year anniversary, 2021 Virtual Achievement Benefit. This is a program that well is well worth your support. Okay, my friends, we have received countless incredible donations. And just like 100% of our scholars, we are looking for 100% of you right now to show up whatever your reach is. It does not matter. We want you in on the action because we want you to have that feeling of knowing that you were part of something so much bigger than yourself alone. Thank you to all of the supporters who have shown up already, who have given, who continue to give. Please, as you are inspired, continue to give throughout the evening. What an incredible 10th year anniversary celebration and to hear from so many supporters across the years. Up next, we have SEO board member and 2021 event co-chair John Rogers, to present the Corporate Leadership Award to John Winkle-Reed, who is, by the way, a UChicago alum. Good evening. I'm John Rogers, Partner and Education Sector Lead for TPG's RISE Fund. And I'm also an SEO Scholars Advisory Board member here in San Francisco. It's my privilege to serve as co-chair of the 2021 Achievement Benefit, alongside Sarah Kirsten, partner at Kirkland & Ellis. Thank you, Sarah, for everything you've done to make this year's Achievement Benefit a success. I also wanna thank my fellow board members and members of the SEO National Board, including my partner, Maya Korngel, and of course, Board Chair Henry Kravis and SEO President and CEO William Goodlow for all of your efforts to ensure the success of this year's Achievement Benefit. I need to give a huge thanks to Omar and the entire team in San Francisco. We've been through a lot over the past couple of years, but what you've had to deal with shifting the program to a virtual format and keeping the scholars focused and on track, it's incredible work. Which brings me, of course, to the scholars themselves. You are such an inspiration to all of us. You hung in there for yourselves and for each other, and the power of your peer group really came through. You supported each other and kept your focus on the goal of getting into and graduating from some of the best colleges in the country. Throughout my work at the RISE Fund and over the past two decades of my work in the education sector, I know there's a steep and linear correlation between the quality of the education you attain and your economic prospects in life. I was invited several years ago by my dear friend, Christina Omari, to get involved in SEO, and I was blown away by the outcomes they achieve. 100% of scholars get into college and 90% graduate. Those outcomes are almost unparalleled. The guidance and support that the scholars receive through SEO is truly life-changing, and it's an honor for me to be here celebrating 10 years of our impact with scholars in San Francisco. You heard the scholars tonight, and it's clear just how driven they are to succeed. The motivation, the talent, the commitment. What's missing for far too many students, though, is access to opportunity. So it's incumbent upon all of us who have had so many opportunities to open the door for others. We all have a role to play in ensuring that where a young person comes from, their economic background or their race does not determine their future. I can think of few people as devoted to that idea as tonight's second honoree, John Winkle-Reed, CEO of TPG. From his leadership at TPG to his philanthropy and across his entire career, John has recognized the value of diversity and inclusion. He's remained committed to the idea that education, leadership, and access to capital and transform individuals, families, and communities. I have the opportunity to see up close that John authentically lives those values and seeks to inculcate them in our workplace at TPG. Throughout his tenure as CEO, John has worked to make TPG a diverse and inclusive organization and to ensure that we engage with the companies in which we invest to foster diversity and inclusion amongst the boards on which we serve and within the management teams with whom we partner. It is my honor to present this year's Corporate Leadership Award to John Winkle-Reed. Thank you so much, John. 
It's an honor to be with all of you tonight and be this year's SEO Corporate Leadership Award recipient. I have to say I am really impressed by SEO scholars and so inspired by the amazing young people working toward their dreams, including graduating from college. I appreciate John and Maya and all TPG team members who have committed to volunteering their time with and supporting SEO. I also want to congratulate my fellow honoree, Dr. Pierre Theodore. It's an honor to share the virtual stage with you tonight. Thank you for your work to ensure equitable healthcare access for the world's most vulnerable and underserved populations. And of course, I'm thrilled to hear that one of our MCs tonight, Jaira, has just started her college journey at my alma mater, the University of Chicago. This year marks my 40th reunion from the University of Chicago, so my tips on fun things to do are a bit outdated, but I'm confident you'll have a fantastic and meaningful experience. My journey and background help explain why I believe so strongly in education and mentorship. I grew up in Milburn, New Jersey, which is a suburban town outside of New York City. My parents played a huge role in shaping my worldview as I grew up. My mom was a school teacher and my dad worked in the parking lot business in Newark, New Jersey. My parents put a large emphasis on education they wanted to create opportunities for their children. They believed in the power of education and I had a family, teachers, coaches, and other mentors who supported me along the way. My dad taught me that whatever you do, do it with excellence. And I've kept that lesson with me throughout my life. After high school, I decided to attend the University of Chicago because they gave me a generous scholarship, which I needed. Leaving New Jersey to attend the University of Chicago was a life-changing experience for me. One of the biggest opportunities was an internship on Wall Street. When I first arrived, the financial sector was very foreign to me. I focused on being excellent and quickly, I found mentors to coach me. Mentors helped me to become a student of the markets and push me by giving me responsibilities that I wasn't quite ready to take on. I know firsthand from my own experience and those I have gone on to manage and mentor, motivated young people can achieve extraordinary things when given access to high quality educational and career opportunities. I'd like to discuss the role of diversity and inclusion in my career. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are core to my personal values and critically important to everything we do at TPG. I've been afforded great opportunity in my life, but I know that opportunity is not equally accessible to everyone. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are important on the basis of my values, but from experiences at every stage in my life and career, I know it is also critical to building the best teams and the best culture at any organization. And I have seen the power of the prioritization of these values for investors and the market. I firmly believe that people want to work in inherently diverse environments that are full of different perspectives and backgrounds. I also know from both experience and rich data across every industry that diverse environments produce better outcomes. At TPG, we've made substantial commitments to fostering a DEI culture within our firm, our ecosystem, and our industry. As an example, we have focused on attracting, retaining, and developing diverse talent at every level. Over 50% of the TPG's last two associate classes are women or racially, racially, ethnically diverse, and we have targeted pipeline efforts across all levels to retain our top talent. We have joined several coalitions that support policies in the private and public sectors focused on women, LGBTQ+, and the DACA community. We have sought to build diversity across not only our firm, but also our ecos ecosystem of portfolio companies and networks. And finally, to make sure that our teams embed the com a, our commitment to diversity in all that we do, we include diversity and inclusion metrics and annual performance reviews of our people and managers where it impacts compensation and promotion. SEO plays a critical role in, in enabling TPG to live our values of diversity equity, and inclusion. We all know that opportunity is not equally accessible to everyone. Here in the Bay Area and across our country and our world, 
people face unjust barriers because of attributes like their economic background or their gender or their race or their sexual orientation. SEO directly addresses these injustices by finding deeply talented students who may not have the opportunities they deserve. SEO provides them with mentorship, support, and academic enrichment that empowers them to reach their potential as students and as professionals. In addition, SEO's impact reaches beyond the students and professionals it supports. As I said before, diverse environments produce enhanced outcomes for everyone involved. When SEO scholars and alums join TPG or any firm, they make our organization stronger, more capable, and better positioned to deliver to our clients. For these reasons, TPG is a proud, committed, and active supporter of SEO. We are a founding partner of SEO's Alternative Investment Fellowship Program in 2009, and since then we have supported 19 SEO Alternative Investment Fellows and Leveraged Investing Fellows, in addition to many additional graduates of SEO programs. Of course, we know that the private equity industry has a long way to go on diversity, and we must be action-oriented in our commitment to creating pathways for young people of all backgrounds to work in this sector. I am very proud to say that TPG is the number one employer of SEO Alternative Asset Fellows, and we continue to find new ways to support SEO alumni. As an example, the founders of the first firm backed by TPG Next, our initiative to seed and scale diverse-led asset management firms, are SEO career alums. As I hope I've made clear, SEO is deeply important to me, both personally and professionally. As we heard from the scholars earlier this evening, SEO makes a big difference in the lives of many talented and capable people. Having heard the stories tonight, I am confident that our industry has an amazing set of future leaders. I'd ask everyone to join me and TPG in supporting, nurturing, and investing in the next generation of leaders. Thank you to everyone for joining tonight. And thank you again for this outstanding award. All right, friends, John put it best. Let's open these doors of opportunity for other scholars, especially as SEO is doubling its impact to reach 500 students in the next decade. Remember, you can make your contributions, helping us get to 100% participation. We are well on our way to our goal of $500,000. We've got lots of amazing commentary in the chat. It's super exciting. In the meantime, Jaira, let us know who our next special guest is. Okay, Emily. Our next guest is the one and the only William Goodlow, SEO, CEO, and president, who is also celebrating a milestone this year, 20 years with SEO. Over to you, William. Hi, this is William Goodlow, and I'm proud to be celebrating my 20th anniversary as president of SEO. Thank you for joining our 2021 Virtual Achievement Benefit and investing in opportunity. You know, in learning about SEO and hearing from our phenomenal scholars tonight, you surely understand the reason SEO was founded. Talent is everywhere. It just needs to be developed. Our next speaker, personifies this point. Adam Carr is founder of SEO Scholars San Francisco, chair of its advisory board, and a former member of SEO's national board of directors. Most relevant, Adam is an SEO alumnus and has benefited directly from SEO. He's long given back as a huge champion for our scholars, including underwriting our academic curriculum after joining SEO's national board in 2005. It was about 11 years ago when Adam asked me to join him for breakfast while he was in New York City. He had already relocated to San Francisco and I knew he was interested in being involved with a local nonprofit. So I braced myself for being told he was resigning from SEO's board. And I had all my reasons ready to try to talk him out of it. Instead, Adam told me he wanted to bring SEO scholars to deserving students in the Bay Area. I wasn't so sure about expanding across the country, but Adam was pretty persistent. He said the program was too strong, too impactful for us to wait. There were motivated young people who needed us now. Clearly he was persuasive and the rest is history. And that is why we have established the Adam R. Carr 
Community Leadership Award. Adam is the essential reason we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of SEO Scholars San Francisco. He's allowed us to support hundreds of students in getting to and through college over the last decade. Adam is inspired and inspiring. We are so grateful for Adam's vision and his leadership and for the support and commitment he and his wife Tanya have shown to SEO over the years. It is my honor and privilege to present my friend, Adam Carr. Thank you, William, and good evening, everyone. What a night. I'm Adam Carr, founder and chair of SEO Scholars San Francisco. I'm an alum of SEO's career program, and I know firsthand the impact of opportunity to those who haven't had access. Almost 30 years ago in New York City, on my first day of SEO training, I heard something that has stuck with me ever since. It's not about you, it's about the next you. SEO instilled in me very early the importance of sending the elevator back. For Black, Latinx, and low-income students in major cities in this country, they only have a 1 in 11 chance of graduating from college. 1 in 11. That's unacceptable because it's not a shortage of talent or motivation in these communities. What is lacking is opportunity. By providing scholars with a rig rigorous education, support, and guidance, we help them rewrite the script. 90% of our SEO scholars graduate from college creating a new generation of leaders who will transform families, communities, and the world. And we're continuing to do so. We are now on track to serve 500 scholars here in the Bay. Now, achieving these results would not be possible without the entire SEO family. To my fellow advisory board members, past and present, your leadership, investment, strategic thinking, love, and commitment to SEO have meant everything. Thank you. I also want to recognize SEO's national board chair, Henry Kravis, for his leadership to increase our impact in New York and right here in San Francisco. And of course, none of this would be possible without the incredible drive and commitment of our SEO Scholars San Francisco team to Omar, Jacqueline, Emma, Miranda, and the entire team, thank you for your tireless work every day to make college dreams a reality. And of course, I feel immense gratitude and awe for our students and their families. Thank you for believing in us and entrusting us with your college dreams. Now, it takes an entire community of dedicated supporters to make this program work. A deep thank you for your enduring investment in SEO. <clears throat> and what better way to celebrate our 10th anniversary than recognizing our 2021 honorees, Pierre and John. I'm so grateful for your leadership and I'm glad that everyone has had the opportunity tonight to learn more about your incredible leadership and your commitment to equity. And a huge thank you to our event co-chairs, John and Sarah. And of course, I wanna take a moment to personally thank each of our top sponsors for their support. Now, in closing, looking back over the last decade, I've seen the incredible success young people can have when we work to open doors for them. I see, I see them leading us into a future that is better and brighter. Whether a longtime supporter of SEO or just learning about us tonight for the first time, know this, you are investing in a future. You're investing in future generations, helping scholars seize every opportunity. Thank you for your support. Now, we miss seeing everyone in person tonight, but we look forward to next year when we will come together in person and we will celebrate 
former Secretary of State, Dr. Condoleezza Rice. And until then, be well and good night. All right, thanks Adam and Jaira. This is the official end to our programming, but please let the guests know what they can stick around to do. Yes, if you would like, you can stick around to stay on and watch testimonials from our scholars and engage in the chat. That's awesome. And of course, donate, invest in the next decade of college access and opportunity. Help us get to 100% participation tonight. This was an incredible evening with over $3.56 million raised to support scholars. It's absolutely amazing. $229,000 tonight alone. I wonder if we could get another thousand in there just to make it a and even 2.30. Thank you all so much for joining us on this Wednesday evening. Thank you, Jaira, for joining me on camera, being such an awesome co MC Again, my name is Emily Quinn. Have a great night. Thank you, Emily. And good night from Chicago. I just want to say thank you to all the sponsors for your support. Without your support, none of this would be possible. And especially us scholars in SEO, none of our dreams would be this close from being realized. You've given us a huge opportunity. And we also hope to, just like you, be able to contribute to this program in the future so others could go through the success we went through. Thank you. 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 Thank you, SEO. Thank you for attending this event. It's th and thank you so much. It's it means the world, especially to a scholar like me. Since I became an SEO scholar and also an SEO alumni now, SEO became the cornerstone and backbone to my educational pursuits and success. SEO drove me to pursue, persevere, and break through challenges. I began aiming for higher things. I began looking at college as a possibility instead of a dream. I've become a more organized person and really excited for college. I've gained a community of people who I could turn to for help. I went from being a C and B average student to being an A and B average student. I learned how to advocate for myself, whether it is in classrooms, um, outside of SEO, or for any topics that I am concerned about. I always advocate for what I believe in. I've been able to attend a private university, such as the George Washington University, um, make connections with New York scholars, um, and have been able to share my story amongst thousands of people who support SEO scholars. Since I became an SEO scholar, I came to realize the potential of myself, both as an individual and as a student. Through the course of SEO scholars, I've faced countless obstacles that seemingly I couldn't have done before. But because I realized my potential and my power as an individual and as a scholar, I grew, I transformed and I became better. Over the last year, SEO helped me navigate the pandemic by connecting me with many support groups and systems so that I'm able to thrive during COVID-19. SEO Scholars has helped me plan uh, uh, for my future college. Uh, I've made a college list and I'm still working on it, um, but I definitely have a better idea of what kind of college I want to go to um, and what environment I want to learn in. Over the last year, SEO has helped me better my SAT scores and prepare me for um, the AP test, which thanks to SEO, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Over the last year, SEO has helped me improve on my academics and helped me practice and strengthen my academic skills. It's also helped me with my time management. They sent me to LA to visit UCLA my freshman year. 
they're planning a college visit for me this year and they connected me with uh, an internship in Dragon Year this summer. Over the last year, SEO has helped me excel in math and English. Um, it made me it made me more confident in my knowledge. Over the last year, SEO has helped me challenge myself and gain better skills such as like time management skills, collaboration skills, and just study skills in general. With SEO, I will achieve my dream of going to college as a first-generation student. With SEO, I will achieve my dream of getting a successful career that can uh, that I can support my family with, and that I can also help other people at the same time. I, I know I want to be able to help my parents because they left a lot behind uh, to come to the U.S. With SEO, I will achieve my dream of, I think, going to my dream college, which is MIT. With SEO, I will achieve my dream of going to my dream college, which is Stanford University. And I also want to become an ER doctor. With SEO, I will achieve my dream of attending the University of Pennsylvania so that I can give back to the family that has given me so much and sacrificed so much just so I can be where I am today. With SEO, I will achieve my dream of being able to graduate from a four-year college, which is something I've always wanted to do, being able to become independent and being able to choose my own path. With SEO, I will achieve my dream of pursuing a master's in public health, followed by working with a nonprofit organization that focuses on addressing social determinants that affect the African American community. Actually, I've already achieved my dream of uh, going to a really good college and graduating from college. Um, go Bears for UC Berkeley. <laughs> Opportunity. Inspiring. Community. Tenacity. Astonishing. Motivating. Fulfilling. Friendship. Challenge. Hopeful. Rewarding. Growing. Family. Love. Fun. Support. Future. Limitless. A blessing. Through my time in SEO, I've already seized so many opportunities, including internships, SAT, English and math every weekend and every weekday. You have mentors that guide you wherever you want to do. You have college admissions for senior year. And most of all, there's emotional support in college for whenever you're bogged down during finals or your midterms, you could go to SEO at any time and ask for help. I have these opportunities through SEO by being open-minded to what SEO provides, being able to ask questions if I have any, being able to ask for help and be vulnerable. Networking with other peers, engaging with other SEO scholars, um, and using the skills and connections that I've developed, such as, you know, having a growth mindset. Just being persistent and being proactive. Being the best person I can be and taking everything that is possibly given to me, although I may have doubts in myself. Researching any um, scholarships that they like recommend to me, researching any colleges that they recommend me, because chances are if SEO recommends something to you, it means something. SEO is unique because I've been able to stay connected with my peers from freshman year in high school to my senior year in college. As I'm growing and learning more things about myself, I'm reminded where I come from and how I was able to grow from being a freshman in high school and to now being a junior in college because of the skills um, that I've been able to learn and take away from SEO. Unlike school, the smaller groups and the, um, the emphasis on group work really makes it feel like a tight-knit community that is focused around the main goal of getting to college. SEO makes you feel like you're part of them. No matter who you are, the color of your skin or where you're from, SEO accepts you for being you. SEO, what's unique about it is that it helps you advocate for yourself 
and um, by building such a supportive community of peers, um, mentors, college advisors, if you can take advantage of all of that, um, it helps you feel more confident. SEO is unique because it's not just a program, it's a community, it's a family that'll always stay with you. It's a different learning style. You have self-agency over the work that you do and the like material that you're learning. You have to, dis you, you're discovering things on your own. And honestly, I think that's like the best learning style. Being an SEO is really beautiful because we all encourage each other and we all share this common goal and we know how to support each other. And when one of us feels unmotivated, we know that because we share the same common goal, we can help each other and remind ourselves that it's worth it. In 10 years, I hope to be a college graduate and an SEO alumni and be able to come back and share my story with the future generation of SEO scholars. In 10 years, I hope that my legacy will be encouraging to many people in the Latinx community. I want them to know that making it to college is something we can check off our list and we can break these stereotypes that people have about us in college. I also hope that I can influence others in my family such as my little siblings and my cousins. In 10 years, I hope that my legacy will be graduating SEO, um, graduating high school with um, really good grades. So then I can hopefully get into my dream college. In 10 years, I hope that my legacy will be the first to graduate in my family. I hope that I'm able to pass on what SEO taught me to the rest of the world. I want to support other low-income, first-gen families. In 10 years, I hope that my legacy would be that I have graduated from my four-year college and I would have a career in the biotech industry. I hope that I can also inspire the same drive to help others the way that I was helped. And I think that's the most valuable gift that anyone can ever give. In 10 years, I hope that my legacy will be known as someone who is a change maker. I want to be able to create opportunities for other individuals that look like me, both in the education world and in the medical world, so that marginalized communities are able to access the resources that they are unfortunately not able to access as of right now. My advice to the next generation of scholars is to take advantage of every opportunity that you're given, no matter how small it may be. As a minority, the odds are stacked against you, and there's countless opportunities in SEO that will help equalize that. All you have to do is reach for your dreams. SEO community is your safe space. Talk to anyone in SEO if you ever need anything, because they are always there for you, and we're always there for each other. My advice to the next generation of scholars is to really just believe in yourself there are times where some things are going to feel like you can't do it or that people are asking too much of you or that maybe this isn't the right path but i promise you that you definitely can do it my advice to the next generation of scholars is to take a chance take a risk and to be continually motivated to strive for your success. My advice to the next generation of scholars is a quote from Michelle Obama, when they go low, you go high. I've used this quote throughout high school and even throughout my college experience. And as a person of color, I'm aware that I do not have the luxury of someone who is not a person of color. I've worked 10 times as hard to get to where I'm at, and I'm sure you have done the same. Therefore, use your anger towards the development of your growth. And again, when they go low, you go high. Always look at yourself as the person who can do it. Never compare yourself to to like the person who you think is better or the person who you think is worse because we're all in the same boat here. And as long as you look at yourself and think, I can make it, I can do it, and I will do it, you are gonna do it and you're gonna get far. My advice to the next generation of scholars is really seize every opportunity you're given because these opportunities really come once in a lifetime and you don't want to miss out.